Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase it immediately. You're going to need it. Right now, we are on page number 28 and we are about to solve percentage problems that you find on page number 28. After having done the problems that we're going to do together right now, or percentage problems and, the, and, the, and later on the sample problems that you see on the next page, 10 of them, if you feel that you need more practice, you will find more practice, you will find more problems to work on. If you go to this video, T's math day thir 13, 14 and 15, as I've told you before several times, the math that you will encounter on the HESI is very comparable very similar to the math that one, one encounters on the T's. They are one and the same. So here are some more videos here you can watch 13, 14 and 15 where you will find similar problems. In addition to that, there is a series of basic math which will provide you some more, more help if you need it. From day number 31 through 40 you will find percentage problems from 31 through 40 and from 51 through 65 you will find problems that will teach you how to convert percentages to decimals to fractions and back and forth. Let's get going. Number one. Example number one, we are being asked to convert this decimal, we are being asked to convert decimals to percent. The decimal that is given to us is 0 0.13, 0 0.13. We have to convert this decimal into percent. Before we, before we try, figure out, before we worry about how to convert it into percent, let's first understand what this word means. What is the word, what does the word percent actually mean? Percent means exactly what it says. If you were to dissect the word percent, if you were to dissect it, percent means per 100, per 100, or if you like, out of 100. Percent means out of 100. If I say 5%, what I'm telling you is, if you want to express 5% as a fraction, 5% means 5 out of 100. There you go, that's 5% expressed in fraction. Similarly, 7% uh, uh, will be 7 out of 100. If we say 48%, 48% 48 expressed as a fraction is 48 out of 100. Here, we are, being we are giving decimal, we are being asked to convert it to percent, percent means out of 100, out of 100 means we need to, we need to have 100 at the bottom. We can have 100 at the bottom, we can introduce 100 at the bottom as long as we can multiply the top by 100 as well. To make sure that we do not change the value of this thing, if we take our 0.3 and multiply it by 100 over 100, 100 over 100 is 1, therefore we have not changed the value of 0 0.13, 0 0.13 is still 0 0.13, except now we have the 100 at the bottom and the rest is downhill. Now, 0.3 times 100 is just 13, and 13 over 100, there you go. We're being asked to convert decimal to percentage, there we go, it's out of 100. Since it is, as long as we have 100 at the bottom, as long as the denominator is 100, any fraction at all, any fraction at all, as long as the denominator is 100, then what you're looking at on the top, in the numerator, that's your percentage, that's how many percent you have here. So 0.13 times 100 becomes 13 and 13 over 100 and therefore it tells us that it is 13% because we have 100 at the bottom. Let's do one more. Number two. In number two we are being asked to convert, see this is very tricky, number two is a little tricky. We are being asked to convert point, point zero zero 0.002 into a percent. And that's why if you try to do it mentally, you might mess it up a little bit. You might get a little confused. Just remember, percent means out of 100. As long as you have 100 at the bottom, you're home free. As long as you have 100 at the bottom, you're home free. Now, we can't simply introduce 100 at the bottom. We have to undo it by multiplying top by 100. There we go. We have taken this quantity and multiplied by 100 over 100, which is 1. So we haven't changed anything yet. We haven't changed anything at all because we are simply multiplying it by 1. The rest is very easy. All we have to figure out is how much is 0 0.002 times 100. Since 100 has two zeros, 0 0.002, this decimal will move two places. 1, 2, it will end up here. It will end up there. So 0 0.002 times 100 simply becomes 0.2 over 100. There you go, 0.2 over 100. And now we have 100 at the bottom, therefore 0. 0.2 divided by 100 must equal 0.2% or if you like, or if you like, 2 tenths of a percent. 2 tenths of a percent. That's how it's read. 2 tenths of a percent or if you like, a fifth of a percent. A fifth of a percent. 
because two times when you reduce it, it becomes a fifth. Let's go to the next one, number three. In number three, we're being asked to do just the opposite. We are being asked to convert percent into a decimal. We are asked to convert a percent into decimal. Let's see what we can do. Number three. It says convert the percent into a decimal. 85.4% into a decimal. Well, let's look at a simple scenario first so we can understand it. How would we convert, if you were to ask, if you were to ask to convert 50%, if you were to ask to convert 50% to a decimal, what is 50% in decimal? Of course we know the answer, 50% expressed in decimal is 0.5. But where does the 0.5 come from? It's very simple. Percent means exactly what we said. We just talked about percent means out of 100. So 50 percent, 50 percent actually means 50 out of 100, which is half. 50 divided by 100 is half, and there is your 0 0.5. Similarly, if we had 25 percent, 25 percent expressed as a 25 percent, if you had to convert that percentage into decimal, 25 percent expressed as a decimal, we know it's 0.25. Question is, where does the 0.25 come from? Well, it comes from the same process that we just did here. 25% means 25 out of 100. 25 out of 100, when you reduce it, becomes 1 quarter, and 1 quarter, of course, is 0.25. The same thing is going on here. 85.4% is same as 85.4 over 100. The question is, what's going to happen when you divide this quantity by 100? It's very simple. Since we're dividing it by 100, this decimal is going to move two space. One, two. It's going to end up here, just like here. Here the decimal point was here. It moved two spaces. It became 0.5. Here it was, decimal point was here. It moved two places. One, two. It ended up here. You see? It ended up here. The same thing is going to happen. So we pick up our decimal point. We pick our decimal point which was here and move it to here, two places. So it becomes 8, 5, 4. Now when the, when the quantity when the quantity begins with decimal, it's always a good idea to stick a zero in front of it for, for visual aid. It serves no other purpose, it's not required, it's not mandatory, it's not compulsory. It's purely for visual aid so that it's easy to see, it's easy on the eyes, you can, a reader can pick up quickly that it is 0.854 because you have a leading zero, 0 0.854. Let's do the next one, number four. Number four is very easy. Number four, we can do it right here. Number four is actually silly. We're being asked to convert 0.75 into decimal. 0.75 into decimal. Is that what they're asking? Change the percent to decimal. Exactly. 70. No. Ex Number four. Change the percent to decimal. Yes, 75 percent to decimal. 75 percent to decimal. Well, 75 percent is, everybody knows 75 percent means 75 over 100, which is 0.75. If they were asking us to convert this into fractions, 75 over 100, as you know, is 3 quarter. It's too silly. Those are very easy. Let's do the last one, number 5. Number 5 is asking us, which is on the next page, convert the fraction to a percent. Convert the fraction to a percent. Example number five. Fraction two percent. And the fraction that is given to us is five six. Again, before we worry about five six, before we worry about five six, let's talk about a simple fraction that's easy to see. How about one quarter? If we were to ask to convert if, if, they were, if we were given a fraction of one quarter and we were asked to convert to a percentage, how much is one quarter? Of course, we know one quarter is 25% or 0.25. The question is, where does it come from? Where does it come from? It's very simple. One quarter, if you want to convert it into a percentage, one quarter is simply going to be 1 over, one over 4 times 100 percent. It's the reverse. The process is reversed. Now, we're converting into percentage one quarter expressed as a percentage, you have to multiply it by 100. And of course, 4 is going to cancel out with 125. 
and we know that one quarter is 25 percent. Similarly, if we had one one half, and if you're being asked to convert that fraction to a percent, we will simply would have taken our one half, multiplied by 100, and that's how much percent if you have. And then, of course, two will cancel out with 100, becomes 50, and of course, everybody knows, everybody knows that half is same as 50 percent. The same thing we have to do it here, multiply it by 100, and it becomes percent. The only thing is when you do that, the things do not work out very nicely. We're going to have to do some division. Let's first divide top and bottom by 2. If we divide top and bottom by 2, 100 becomes 50, and 6 becomes 3. So what we end up here, this is same as 5 times 50, which is 250, over 3 percent. We can't leave it like that. We have to work on it. We have to simplify it. We have to reduce it. Let's do it. We have to divide 250 by 3. Let's do it here. 250, we're going to divide it by 3. Let's begin the process, shall we? Let's begin the process. How do we go about converting, uh, dividing 250 by 3? Well, it's very simple. One digit at a time. How many 3's does 2 have? 2 has no 3's. 2 has no 3's. That 2 goes and joins the 5 and becomes 25. That 2 goes and joins the 5 and becomes 25. How many 3's does 25 have? 25 has 8 threes. 8 threes are 24. 8 threes are 24. After we, after we have taken away 8 threes, which is 24, after we have taken away 24 from 25, we are left with 1. What happens to that 1? That 1 goes and joins the 0 and becomes 10. And 10 divided by 3, how many, how many threes does 10 have? 10 has 3 threes. 3 threes are 9. 3 threes are 9. After we take away 9 from the 10, we have a remainder of 1. That 1 needs to be divided by 3. So the final answer is, it is 83 and 1 third percent. It is 83 and 1 third percent. This original fraction that was given to us, 5, 6 turns out, 5, 6 turns out is equal to 83 and 1 third percent. You got it? Now we're going to redo it, and I'm going to show you a quick way of taking care of this thing. This was very lengthy, this was very tedious, very nerdy, very geeky, very academic way. Let's, ex let's approximate it. Instead of, instead of figuring out the exact value, let's find out the approximate value of 5, 6. Shall we? 5, 6. Okay, pay attention. What we have to understand here, what we have to understand here is that 5, 5, 5, 6 that you see here, what we need to understand is that the 5, 6 that we see there is simply made up of it is simply made up of 4 sixths plus a sixth. 4 sixths plus a sixth. Question is, how much is a sixth? How much is a sixth? Well, let's find out. A sixth, a sixth, a sixth would simply have to be, a sixth would have to be simply half of a third. Okay, stay with me in the, in the story. It's very important that you stay in the story. A sixth is half of a third because one times one is one and two times three is six, which is same as half, half, let's write it in words, half of 33% because a third, a third is 33%. Aha! But third is not exactly 33%. Third is 33.333 uh, repeating. It's not exactly 33%. So we can't put the equal sign. We have to replace the equal sign with approximately equal to. So far so good. So a sixth, a sixth you agree, a sixth you agree is half of 33%, approximately half of 33%. Half of 32, half of 32 is 16. If half of 32 is 16, then half of 33, a half of 33, you see half of one third, which is approximately half of 30, half of one third is approximately equal to half of 33%. Half of 32 is 16, therefore half of 33 would have to be 16 and a half. 16 and a Half. Are you with me in this story so far? Let's continue on the top. Once you understand the concept, you can do this. You this. You can do this thing in the future when you, whenever you're dealing with six. So now we can do finish our story. So we agree that one six is approximately sixteen and a half percent. It's not exactly sixteen and a half percent because a third, because a third is not exactly thirty three percent. A third is 33.333% repeating, therefore it's approximately 16.5%. We're done. We wanted to find out how much was 5 six. 
We wanted to find out how much was 5, 6. Now we're going to go back and write it in a little bit different way. 5, 6, whatever the hell it is. 5, 6, whatever the hell it is, would have to equal, would have to equal 6, 6 minus a 6. Would you agree? Would you agree that 5, 6 would have to equal 6, 6 minus a 6? But 6, 6, 6 out of 6 is 100%. So 5, 6 is 6, 6, 6 minus 1, 6. 6, 6 is 100% minus 1, 6, which we just found out is 16.5%. And therefore, 5, 6 would have to equal 100 minus 16.5%. 100 minus 16 would have been exactly 84%, so it's going to be 83.5%. But remember, remember, we cannot leave, we cannot put a, leave an equal sign here. As soon as we put there, as soon as we make a, as soon as we make a claim that one six is equal to sixteen and a half percent, we have to go back and make sure to change this equal sign into approximately equal. It is approximately equal to. So there we go. Here is our exact answer. Here is our exact answer. Eighty three point eighty three and a third percent. Eighty three and a third percent, and here is the approximate answer. Eighty three and a half percent. Instead of half, we have a third here. As you can see, we are off by very little. 5, 6 is approximately 83.5%, which is very easy. Just remember that a sixth is a half of a third. A third is approximately 33%. Therefore, 6 will have to be half of 33%. Half of 33, half of 32 is 16. Therefore, half of 33 is 16 and a half. 100 minus 6, 100 minus 16 and a half, because 5, 6 is 6, 6 minus the sixth. 100 minus 16 is 84. Therefore, 100 minus 16 and a half would have to be 83 and a half. Turns out the exact answer is 83 and a third, but that's, that's close enough. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.